Hello, it's Aaron Sorensen with VFXCentral.net, and uh, let's take another look at this effect we're going to be creating. One more time. All right, let's pause it where we have the effect. So today we're going to be breaking down how I did this electric effect. This is the effect they did on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Electro's effect, and uh, I'm just going to show you what I did to create this. Now, if you don't want to spend the time or the money on the plugins to create this effect, you can actually download the effect I created on vfxcentral.net in our free content page. I have it right there for you. You can download it and uh, screen it on top of your footage, so check that out. So this is really going to be more of a breakdown video rather than a tutorial me going through every step of it. So I'm going to show you how I created this effect and uh, hopefully you guys can do the same. So first off I started with the uh, lightning effect. I created a solid, did the lightning effect and did a, changed a couple things in here. But if you play it, it moves around like so. Then what I did is I dragged that lightning effect into a new composition and I did a freeze time at where I thought looked best and then I had it basically uh, go from 100% opacity down to zero, like so. After that, I simply just started duplicating the layer, um, getting some really cool glows, and I'll show you like that, and the highlights, even more in the blues, and then I did a big red one. And all I did was a, uh, so I did a color balance and a fast blur, and then screen these all on top of each other. And with a couple of layers like this, doing the main glow and then doing some uh, oranges and purples and a couple different things, you'll start to see the effect starts to look pretty cool. After I was done duplicating the layer many times and changing the color balance and the fast blur effect, um, I had it fade out like that. And I had uh, some of the highlights and the ones that were more blurry fade out lastly. So if you look at these layers and press T, uh, we can see that some of these fade out at different times and that kind of gave this uh, really cool fading away effect. Next, I created a bunch of particles behind the lightning effect to give it that cool amber kind of spark effect behind it. Uh, so let me play this for you. And they all, they're all doing a bunch of different kind of motions. Um, let me isolate each of these layers for you. So we have one that kind of moves forward a little bit faster like that. And then we have some that kind of go upward like that. And then we have a, more of a stronger middle particle moving around. I highly suggest you buy the uh, Particular plugin by Trapcode. It's really awesome, really powerful. You can also use Particle World uh, built into After Effects, which is also really good. I wanted the particles to look like they were coming off of the lightning. And in order to do that, I took the lightning effect, dropped it above my particles, and then I did a Luma Mat. And this makes it so the particles are pretty much masked to wherever the brightness is on the lightning effect. And so that really helped it look like it stayed within that area. Next, I created a new composition and I created two layers of fractal noise. Um, fractal noise, you can come in here and do lots of really cool effects. Um, go into your sub settings and change a lot of this. Just play around with it. And then I made a mask and uh, it does these cool kind of motions if you mess with your evolution or even your offset. You can do some amazing stuff. And I did one that was a little bit bigger, um, and then I did one that was a little bit smaller, and then I did a screen effect to make them on top of each other. I dropped my fractal noise composition into a new composition, and then I made an adjustment layer, and in that adjustment layer, I created the new heat distortion plugin by Video Copilot. I really like this plugin, and it does some really cool uh, distortions and effects for fire or powers or anything like that. I'm pretty new at it, but I got some really cool results using it. I then dragged in my lightning, fractal noise, and my particles all into one composition. Let me isolate each of these so you can see what I did. So my bottom layer was my lightning effect. Next, I added even more glow to give it more effect. And then I put in my particles on top of that. So there they are. And I did some more glow on top of them by duplicating, adding a fast blur, and doing these all screened on top of each other. Then I had a bunch of fractal noise that I changed the color balance and the size and shape and mask and blended them all together. And I got this really cool effect so that when the lightning fades away, you can see all this cool atmosphere that was left behind. And when it's all put together, you got this effect. So 
So I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, last thing I did as well is I made another adjustment layer, did an unsharpen, which brings out some more detail in the lightning and even in our fractal noise. And then lastly, uh, Video Copilot's optical flares, I added a flare at the very beginning and had the brightness uh, start really big and then slowly go away and also added the flicker effect and turn up the speed and the amount, which gave it that cool uh, lightning feel. And it's that easy. There's, It's really a bunch of layers and uh, slight motions. Uh, the fractal noise isn't moving that fast. Everything is very subtle. And uh, it's really just duplicating layers, changing the color balance, and uh, doing lots of subtle uh, little things and uh, it turned out pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out vfxcentral.net and uh, download some more free products. We have some new products coming out and we're really excited for the summer. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share it, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for watching.